Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing? My name is Matt Drabo. This is Three Book Theater. And you know, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker is out right now. And uh, whoo, whoo, it is, it's drumming up a lot of emotions and a lot of people and not necessarily in like the best way, but uh, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's like a mixed reaction. Well, mixed reaction is a fair way of, of expressing it, right? It's a fair way of describing it. I personally think that the movie is doing better than expected, considering the fact that it's already pulled in $130 million in two days, and it's it was like only supposed to be estimated at like $175 to, uh, uh, to $200 million. but if it pulls in $70 million or more between Saturday and Sunday, then it's going to completely blow past The Last Jedi, which will be interesting. And I do think word of mouth actually has a lot to do with it. But when we talk about this movie, we, people have been really referencing the Rotten Tomato score. Now, I have said multiple times, 100%, this really means nothing. But people like to bring it up as a metric. So that's the reason why I brought it up here. So we see that it's at 57% off of 351 reviews. It's been holding steady around that metric. I did predict that it would get to 60 I'm starting to think I could be wrong on that one, but the audience score here, which is what a lot of people have been looking at in regards to how to judge the movie overall is showing us a verified rating score of 86%. Now the verified rating score has everything to do with buying the tickets through Fandango. And I'm not a big fan of that myself because people who didn't buy tickets through Fandango like me can't be part of the verified review score. So that is definitely, uh, definitely a problem. So when you look at something like uh, like this movie and you look at the, the 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 controversy surrounding it and everything, right? There's one person who I've been really waiting to see who's going to be talking about this. And that of course is JJ Abrams. And in a new interview here, uh, he actually addressed the negative reviews of the movie. And to me that's fascinating because oftentimes directors don't really do that. Not in the first weekend of the film's release, talking about the negative reviews. Oftentimes, they shy off for a while, they don't really respond to it, and they just kind of move past it, right? Give it a couple weeks down the road, then maybe they talk about it once. The original, like the initial hype is over because they don't want people uh, to, uh, to to get the, the wrong idea and to not go see the movie. But I think here, actually, in JJ's case, it makes a fair amount of sense that this is exactly what they would do, uh, really because... Um, it can actually only help them. I'm not making that up. It can only help them. So this is what it says. Uh, in a, uh, let's see, the director of Star Wars Rise of Skywalker recently participated in a panel where he was asked about negative reactions and if there's a problem with a fandom. And he says, I'd say that they're right. Uh, the people who love it more than anything are also right. I was asked, how did you go about pleasing everyone? I was like, wait, what? Uh, not, not to say that that shouldn't be what anyone tries to do anyway, but how would one even go about it, especially with Star Wars? I don't need anyone here, or I don't need to tell anyone here, we live in a moment where everything immediately seems to default to outrage. And there's a kind of MO of it's either exactly as I see it, or you're my enemy. And he's not wrong, actually. I have been one of the people that have been talking about my unabashed appreciation of the film. And you would be surprised. Probably not really, but you might be a little surprised, maybe a smidge surprised at the amount of crap I've gotten for saying that the movie is actually pretty decent. I mean, a lot of even like really hardcore personal attacks against me simply because I had the audacity to go, yeah, no, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker was actually pretty lit. And to go back to a previous video that I put out there, I, I, I want I want to ask that question to anyone out there who's disagreeing with me on this one. You can disagree with me fine, but should I lie to you about my opinion? Think about that. Anyway, uh, now he does go on to say here that uh, he went on to explain that they understood people would be angry by their choices, but the filmmakers were up for the challenge, saying it's a crazy thing that there's such a norm that seems to be devoid of nuance. It's not about Star Wars. It's about everything and compassion and acceptance. It's a crazy moment. So we knew starting this, any decision we made, any design design decision, any musical decision, any narrative decision would please somebody and infuriate somebody else. And they're right. Well, we are seeing a weird, an odd contingent, so to speak, right? So what we're seeing here is you have general fans like me who dislike The Last Jedi enjoying The Rise of Skywalker. And again, if you look through my previous videos covering this movie this week, you will find a number of people coming out and saying, I didn't think I was going to like it, but my God, I liked it. 
or people saying I outright loved it and some people saying I outright hated it or I found it to be okay, not great. There's a wide spectrum, a whole smorgasbord of opinions and they're all valid. I just want to make that abundantly clear. They're all valid. We can disagree over the metrics of it, but they're still all valid. I, if you don't like the movie, I'm not going to call you my enemy. And I'd hope if I like the movie, you're not going to call me your enemy either. You know, but JJ was right about that. He was up for almost an impossible task. And I do think that also is something that's been brought into consideration by some people. When you look at the general idea of what people are saying about this movie, like I would say overall, when they even like it or don't like it, they agree that he had a near impossible task that JJ actually had to sit there and fix everything about the last Jedi that drove people up the wall. And he did. I mean, arguably so went out there and kind of took a dump on that movie a bit, which angered a number of other people, which is one of the key reasons why I think the audience or why I think the critical score is so low. It's not that the movie necessarily is bad. It's that it took a huge dump on the one before it and it felt very difficult disrespectful. I think warranted, but other people think disrespectful. So what you have is a situation where you've got people trying to find their own confirmation bias in regards to the metrics that they're looking at, which always tends to be the case. But still, he also had a situation where he wasn't going to fundamentally be able to please everyone. And that's where you find yourself. So Chris Terrio also added in here, your only compass, really your only North star is your heart and how you feel about this. And I love that too. I love that too, right? I love that line right there because for me, this movie was straight up about heart, right? And I've talked about that too. I've talked about the scenes that made me tear up, made me well up. And both times I saw the movie made me just get right in the moment and like get into it. Never mind, the musical choices were great. I had a lot of fun with the action and adventure and it was great to see everyone as a team unit being together for the vast majority of the film, which is what we didn't get in The Last Jedi. Again, another one of those major, major, major criticisms. But Terry was on the same. He's like, he went into this movie knowing that it was a love letter to Star Wars. It was a love letter to the old school kind of filmmaking that inspired George Lucas, Republic Serials, Flash Gordon, Samurai movies, all of these other genres that we love. And it's the stuff about Hollywood movie making that we love. It's the big mythic stuff that we love. We went into it deciding that this is what we wanted the final episode to be, which I love. Actually, I love that answer even more than what JJ had said, because they went into this from the prospect of love. They did. They went into it wanting to reference George Lucas and his themes and what inspired him in order to craft something that would be considered at least on, I don't want to maybe say par, but at least trying to get to the same level as what people put the you know original trilogy up to. And there are people out there that are saying this destroys Luke and, and Anakin's legacy. And, and, and no way did it do that. Luke's legacy was destroyed in The Last Jedi. This movie made up for it with the first thing that Luke effing says. Which if you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it. But I mean, it fixes it instantaneously. It goes back to the beginning of The Last Jedi and goes, no, hold out your hand. No, it does that. And it does it really, really, really well. It redeems Luke's arc. It really does. But there are people out there that just want to be mad. But I like the fact, I like the fact that they are referencing stuff like the serials and Flash Gordon and samurai movies and the stuff that Star Wars and Indiana Jones is based on. One of the things I did say about this movie is it felt to me like more of a Spielberg movie versus a Lucas film. And I think we've always said, and, and if you agree with me, let me know in the comment section, but we've always said, how cool would it be if Spielberg directed a Star Wars movie? This feels like if Spielberg directed a Star Wars movie, it feels like it. I'm not saying it specifically is, but there was a lot of elements that felt so The Last Crusade to me. And I, when I realized that on my second viewing, I fell in love with this film even more. So many things hit me in the right way, but that's just me. That's just me coming off of The Last Jedi. This is exactly what I wanted. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll tone it down a little bit. Maybe not exactly, maybe not 100% but enough for me to be satisfied and to be happy and to want to go back and see it again and to look forward to taking my dad to see it in IMAX next week so he can finally experience it. My dad spoiled the movie when I was in Los Angeles seeing it. He spoiled the movie for himself so we could talk about it on the drive home from the airport. That's what Star Wars is, man. Star Wars is like the love of Star Wars. And that is clearly what JJ was attempting to do your mileage may vary on how you interpret that, and that's okay. 
But I think I think that's exactly precisely what he and Chris Terrier wanted to do. They wanted to make it a big George Lucas inspired film. And on that front, I think they absolutely succeeded. Narratively speaking, it's still better than The Phantom Menace. But overall, the Disney sequel trilogy needed a lot of work. And J.J. and Chris Terrio knew that, and which is why they tried giving us a lot, probably too much, in The Rise of Skywalker. It should have been two movies. I don't think anyone out there is going to disagree on that front, really disagree on that front. But you can still see that there is love and there's appreciation for where it all came from. And at the end of the day, the negative criticism is right. It's right. So is the positive criticism. My question then gets to you. Where do you lie on it? Let me know down in the comments below. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. May the force be with you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. All that good, happy fun stuff. And I'll talk to you later. Peace out. Hey, thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to keep the conversation going, and if you made it this far, you clearly do, come on in and join the Discord. Link is in the video description. Can't wait to see you there. Have yourself a great day and peace out.